generating random colors with cloners and matrix cloners let's go so it's actually different for both matrix cloners and cloners so i'm going to show you how to do both of them let's start off with normal cloners so i have a little scene set up here with some grass and we're going to go ahead and search for a user color data node so this user color data node we can go ahead and put into our diffuse color and then we can go ahead in our attribute name change for this to object geometry id color and this is going to color each of our clones differently but this is completely random and we have no control over this so how do we control it so let's go ahead and grab a ramp and we're going to put our ramp into our diffuse color and now our color user data node is going to go into our ramp so this is basically going to control it and say we want random colors anywhere on this grayscale gradient that is the default for our ramp so we can go ahead and actually change the colors here make it more of a green and now we have random colors on this green grayscale for our grass now what if you just want two separate colors so holding control i'm going to grab both the knots that i have here and under our interpolation i'm going to change this to step and then drag our right one up and now you can see we have two separate colors so if i go ahead and change this to something a bit different like a purple you can now see i can drag this around it's going to choose either one or two of our colors so either the green or the purple now what if you have an existing texture that you want to edit? So let's go ahead and put this texture I have here into my diffuse color. This is the texture used by Forrester for grass. So let's go ahead and grab a color correct node. Now a color correct node you can use to edit the gamma, uh, contrast, hue and saturation of your material. So putting this color correct into our diffuse color and then our texture into our input, you can see we have the texture back to normal. So let's go ahead and grab our user data node again, as well as another ramp. Now, the way I like to do this is putting our ramp into our gamma and then putting our user data into our ramp. Again, changing our user data to object geometry ID color. And now this ramp is now controlling our gamma of our material. So this is looking a little dark, so you have to like level this out quite a lot. I don't want it to affect it too much. So maybe a bit more of a white here. And you go ahead. And now we have some grass that is slightly darker than the other grass using the texture that we had applied. Awesome. So this is done with cloners. Let's jump straight onto matrix cloners. So here I am with my updated matrix cloner. As you can see, our color user data is not actually affecting our gamma anymore. And this is because matrix cloners render instances instead of actual physical clones. And our user color data needs some extra steps to make this work. So let's go ahead and first of all, click on our matrix cloner. We're going to go up to MoGraph and add a random effector. So under effectors, random effector. And we all know random effector changes position, scale, and rotation. But we can turn all these attributes off. And we just want the color tab here. And we're going to change our color mode to effector color and turn on our use alpha strength. So this is our first step. Secondly, in our RS color user data, under our attribute name, we're going to change this to MoGraph color instead. And if I go ahead and update my IPR, you can see now it's affecting our gamma. So if I go ahead and change our gradient scale again, you can see now we have the changes in our gamma using our gradient scale. Just to show you, I'm going to go ahead and put this into my input on my color correct. And you guys can see this as a grayscale gradient again. So this is how you do random colors in both cloners and matrix cloners. I hope that was helpful.